incredible scenes this morning on the Jubilee line. It was the target of Extinction Rebellion, the second week of their protest, Ben, about this climate emergency. They decided to target the Tube and the DLR, and this was Canning Town Station this morning. You're seeing these pictures from just up the line from where we are. Uh, incredible scenes as Extinction Rebellion protesters got on top of the trains, and the commuters, not happy that their morning commute was being uh, disturbed in this way, started dragging them off the trains. Now, one man you'll see being dragged to the ground. Some sort of scuffle ensues. We're not sure whether he was beaten on the ground or not, but Transport for London staff, we understand, got involved at that point to try and separate people. Uh, chaos on the platform there and police say that they're now trying to curtail these issues at Canning Town and you can see a strong police presence behind us here uh, at this Jubilee State Line Station as well. Now we understand those uh, Extinction Rebellion protesters had signs saying business as usual is, is effectively going to end in catastrophe. Uh, there are many, many critics of this action this morning. Uh, people online suggesting that targeting the tube, one of the cleanest forms of mass transport, was an own goal for Extinction Rebellion. We're still trying to get hold of them to find out exactly why this particular mode of transport was targeted, but it has ended in chaos this morning as commuters took things into their own hands, upset by more than a week of delays on their morning commute, many of them trying to get to places like Westminster Tube Station here, and you can see the anger in the faces of those people on the platform at Canning Town as they try to drag those protesters down and try to get on their way to work. They can't, though, because the Jubilee line, as you say, is still suspended. Credit, by the way, to the Transport for London staff you can see him who've there had as well. to deal with yeah. this this morning. Um, because what a terrible situation there at Canning Town. Joining us now, someone uh, who themselves is taking action uh, in terms of your diet, John Robb. Mm -hmm. You're a vegan, aren't you? But you think that the protesters have chosen completely the wrong target. I mean, to me, I don't... I mean, I agree a lot of the aims, cos I think we've got a lot of problems and I think we need drastic solutions. We need them fast. But I don't understand um, attacking the tube. I think, for me, I, I would go for cars more because that's a bigger problem. Surely you'd be trying to get everybody onto the tubes if you can get any more people on them because they're so overcrowded in the first place. It's such a tricky situation, this, isn't it? Because everybody... Yeah. I mean, we've seen this letter that was signed by 100 celebrities, high-profile people, uh, describing themselves as hypocrites because they do fly private jets, they do advertise gas guzzling cars, but they're not going to change their approach. And yet the people that you'd think that they want to get on side, the Extinction Rebellion supporters want to get on side, are the working class people trying to get on a tube. As we were hearing earlier, someone on that station shouted out, I'm just trying to feed my family. Dawn Neeson phoned in, said she spoke to a young girl who had a ballet exam. That day she's just trying to get to school. It's not going to garner much sympathy, this, is the, towards the cause, John. No, I suppose the argument is it gets... We're all talking about it, that's brilliant. And like I was saying, what they're, what they're trying to say, the message, is a really powerful message. And in the end, the disruption we're going to get in 20, 30 years' time is a lot bigger than they're not being able to get a tube to, to work in the morning, you know. The, this, what the culture we got and the way we're operating is a car crash, literally a car crash, you know. But this is the uh, wrong platform for it, you know. Mm. So it's, I think it's, it's, there is a backlash. And the thing about um, celebrities, I'm glad they're admitting they're hypocrites, but can they change their lifestyles? You know, you don't have to fly first class everywhere. I mean, I, I have to fly sometimes, and, I'm, I, and this is actually working because I'm thinking, well, I'll just get a train if yeah. I have to go to Europe now. So I think we have to adjust all our lifestyles, but admit we're still hypocrites because we're all trapped in this system, mm. aren't we? Um, we've got new pictures uh, that have just come in of uh, the disruption and, uh, and the anger. I mean, it's reached boiling point, hasn't it, on, uh, on the Tube this morning, and uh, people are losing their tempers and taking action uh, as a result. And it's a very, very unpleasant situation there at Canning Town Station this morning. Um, Joe Stanley, you are a farmer... Uh, we saw a few days ago Smithfield Meat Market yeah. where the stalls were cleared of meat and replaced by vegetables. What do you feel is the impact on you and your livelihood? So, I mean, farmers are at the... We're at the front line of climate change. I think of anyone probably in society, farmers feel climate change the most. There's no doubt it's happening and we need to do, we need to do something. When you say at the front line, do you mean in terms of responsibility or in terms of In terms of, of feeling the impact, you know, at the, at the moment, um, we are, it's impossible for farmers across the country to get our next crop in the ground. It's too wet. It won't stop raining. It didn't stop raining all summer. So this is, we and the extremes of weather are becoming the norm now. So we are we are expect we so absolutely we need to do something to mitigate against global warming. This has to happen now with the, the Smithfield thing. I think unfortunately with with as we see today possibly the wrong target being chosen. 
British agriculture has world-leading standards when it comes to environmentalism, when it mm -hmm. comes to uh, animal welfare, but especially when we come to the environment, is the issue we're looking at here. Um, sustainable farming systems have to be the way forward. Now, there's a huge range of farming systems across the world, obviously. Amazonian deforestation, completely unsustainable. It doesn't matter whether it's for meat or for soya. In Britain, we have the opportunity with Brexit, whichever way you come down on, on, on whichever side of the argument you come down on, going forward, we have the opportunity to create a truly sustainable mm. farming system, even above what we have now. Do you fear, when people talk about going vegan, do you fear for your livelihood? Uh, the, the numbers involved, what, what's, is it 2% of people who identify as vegan uh, in the UK at the moment, I think? It's, it's gone up to about 4 or 5 now. So, you know, the vast majority of people eat meat and enjoy eating meat. Now, absolutely, if they're going to eat meat or other animal protein products, eat sustainably produced... The first step, like you're saying, you know, the first baby step, eat sustainably produced animal products. Now, I would again say grass-fed British, um, British animal products are the most sustainable that you can currently buy. They're, they're fed on grass with rain from the sky and grass which is growing out of the ground, which that's from ground, which can't sure. be used to grow crops. Mm. So John, uh, what was, John, what were your reasons for becoming a vegan? Well, it's, it's, I used to live next door to an abattoir. And when I was growing up in Blackpool in the 60s and 70s, I like most people, the meat on your plate, you just think it's like brown stuff, you eat it, you like the taste of it, of course. But when I lived next door to an abattoir and you can see the cows looking at you, you realise mm. they're sentient beings and they know what's going to happen to them. It's, and it, and it's kind of a sentimental decision, but it's not at the same mm -hmm. time. It's like if you have a pet dog, you, couldn't, you wouldn't eat your dog, would you? And, to me, these are all the reasons. I mean, we have a choice. We're lucky to be in a position where we have a choice. I don't need to eat meat. I don't agree with eating meat. And that's why I did it. Uh, Laura, at the heart of all of this is a critical problem, isn't it? About it is. the rise in global warming and how much humans are to blame. And, and it's breaking my heart because, yes, Extinction Rebellion have a really big and important point to make because last time they had the protest, the government declared a climate crisis. This time they want the government to take action and make policies because they haven't made their policies yet. They obviously said we'd be carbon neutral by 2050, but nothing's been put in place. But as we've seen, the tube is one of the lowest emissions of all modes of transport. And as you said, we should be targeting the roads. Car use is 10 times more than um, the train travel for carbon dioxide. Um, and with meat as well, we were looking at meat yesterday and I wish Mr Broccoli had said, you know, if we had one meat-free day a week, we could save one tonne of carbon emission per person. And it's those points that they should be putting forward rather than standing on the tube, which actually is a really great mode of transport. Uh, we can... Thank you, Laura. Uh, Sadiq Khan has come out and condemned the violence, as uh, you'd hope, from the London mayor. Uh, Matir Pasha, who posted these fo footage, um, is still on the phone for us. Uh, Matir, what time was it when this happened this morning? Uh, I'd say it was about 6.45 a.m. ish, something along those lines. So it's about sort of a, an hour and a half ago you posted these pictures. They are really stark pictures and they don't get any easier to watch. Uh, what's the atmosphere like down there now? Has, has it calmed down? Sure, it has calmed down uh, at the moment. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've actually uh, had to leave the scene now. Uh, a lot of commuters um, were pulled away by the police. Um, as we were sort of being ushered out, a number of policemen... Uh, were running in to sort of support the initial uh, police force that were there. Um, but as I say, when I was there, it was a very stark, a very stark moment. Uh, quite, I was quite astonished. I wasn't expecting something like this to happen. Were you uh, scared? Even seeing... Sorry? Were you scared? No, I, was, I wasn't scared, mm. no. But I, I, a lot of people around me were. I saw one lady uh, crying. She was visually, uh, visibly traumatised. Um, there were a number of people there who were shocked uh, and they couldn't believe uh, what was happening. But I must say as well, as, as the protester was dragged off the train, um, a lot of uh, the commuters were cheering and celebrating. They were happy uh, uh, that this was happening because obviously the disruption uh, that was caused to their journey. Um, uh, it wasn't a, a, a complete um, you know, carnage, as you like. Not everyone was trying to attack them. There were a number of people in the crowd also who were trying to stop and talk sense to some of the protesters saying, look, um, this isn't the way, we shouldn't attack them, um, they're just trying to make a point. Um, but there was a lot of heated discussion um, on the platform, uh, and soon enough a TFL member of staff did come and try and prevent anyone from physically uh, attacking the protesters. Um, 
So it, it, it was a it was a very astonishing moment. Um, I was stunned. I didn't expect something like this to happen. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, East London is a is a place where a number of the people there would have been from working class backgrounds. They would have just been on their way to work. Uh, trying to make ends meet. Uh, and I think the protesters really may have um, uh, sort of missed a trick in terms of where they focus their efforts here today. OK. Mahathir, thanks very much indeed. Uh, British Transport Police say there have been four arrests. Uh, that's the breaking news in the last couple of minutes.